you for joining us. I'm Nada Youssef, and today we're here at the New Cleveland Clinic Rehab Hospital in Beachwood. Uh, it's opening next Tuesday, October 10th for our patients, but you're here to see a sneak peek with a uh, tour with uh, Dr. Shaughnessy and Dave Richard. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi. How, how are you? you? Thank you guys so much for coming in today. It's our pleasure. Today we have Dr. Patrick Shaughnessy, Medical Director of the Cleveland Clinic Rehab Hospital here in Beachwood, and Dave Richer, CEO and Market Manager for Cleveland Clinic Rehab Hospital, including Avon, Beachwood, and Akron. So go ahead and feel free if you guys have any questions as we move along. You can type them in the comments section and we'll answer them as we go. Thank you. So let's go ahead and get started. Anything you guys want to tell our viewers to begin with? I think, um, you know, just welcome. Uh, this is the newest location that we have. Um, in our network of hospitals, it'll be three hospitals, one in Avon that's already open, has been for two years, Beachwood opening up uh, on Tuesday, taking our first patients from Euclid, and then Edwin Shaw in November in a month. Um, all 60 bed uh, acute rehab hospitals, all private rooms, and we're uh, pretty proud of uh, what we've created here and look forward to um, really being involved in the market. So can't wait to give you a tour. As a Cleveland Clinic physician, I'm very excited about the opportunity to open a new facility, a joint venture with Select Medical. Uh, going to be a new challenge. Great. Thank you guys so much. Well, let's go ahead and get started and you guys can kind of walk us through. Okay. So um, you'll notice that, of course, the colors are Cleveland Clinic colors, white uh, and black. And um, we are just putting the finishing touches on the building now. So as we walk around, you'll see Still, uh, you know, we're working on our punch list. Everything isn't quite the way it will be on Tuesday, but um, we're very, very um, excited about it. Okay. So we want to go ahead and kind of get started and tell us what, who are the patients that come to this hospital? Sure. Specifically. Um, actually, we treat a wide variety of people that um, really need intensive uh, rehab services. Um, we have, of course, medical specialties like Dr. Shaughnessy um, with physiatry, um, which is a physician that specializes in rehab medicine. So it could be someone that has had a stroke, uh, brain injury, spinal cord injury, MS, amputations, things along those lines. So, um, of course, Dr. Shaughnessy can probably speak better than I can uh, to the clinical um, uh, folks that we bring in, but um, it really is a different environment. It's a different level of care. Uh, than um, what you might see out there. I think you summarized it pretty well. And basically, we're, we're looking for patients that need some time after an acute hospitalization before they go home. We're going to get them back to the community. That's, that's our goal. That's the goal of inpatient rehab. We do a pretty good job of it. So. Great. All right. So we're walking down. Uh, obviously, came in the main doorway. To our right are the administrative offices. We don't need to go in there. There's just a lot of activity going on, a lot of education right now um, in preparation for our opening on Tuesday. Um, our education room here as well. And as we walk through here, we do have a cafeteria uh, that is available uh, for our patients, families, and staff. Um, we just opened that up a couple weeks ago and uh, they've done a wonderful job, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, it allows us to be able to host some events in here as well, um, which we have already started. Um, again, it's kind of closing up for the day um, because we're uh, wrapping up a lot of our education, um, but it is kind of a nice environment. Um, another thing that we have on site here that um, a lot of places don't is we do have our on site pharmacy, uh, which is uh, available 24 7. Um, Again, with uh, the level of patients that we uh, treat in this environment, um, having access to a pharmacist on site is critical. And so, as an acute hospital, we provide the medications for the patients. It's you know they don't have to pay extra for that; they've already paid for it. Um, so we will provide the medication just like in the hospital. So. And we're going to head on over to the therapy gym, um, which is a pretty spacious area. Program for someone that maybe have to be here for a few days first? That's a good question. The expectation is that when someone's admitted here, that they're going to be able to tolerate a pretty intensive uh, therapy program from day one. Um, 
so we start with uh, pretty comprehensive evaluations uh, by all of our medical staff and our therapy staff. I'm going to move over this way. Um, but it is expected that we're going to be able to have people involved uh, right away, three hours a day. Um, and the average is three hours a day, five days a week, but uh, that's the average. It could be more than that. It needs to be a minimum, actually, of three hours, five days a week. So we're going to head over into the gym area so that you can take a look and see how spacious it is, uh, some of the equipment that we have, and some of our simulated training environments. So what would you say is the biggest difference between a rehab and a community hospital? Um, do you want to start with that one and then I can, <laughs> I can finish it? Certainly. I mean, community hospital you go to when you're sick. You're, you're, you've got a, a medical emergency. You've got a deteriorating status. You need to be stabilized. You've got to be treated. Doctors there do a great job of that. Um, the rehab hospital is for patients that are stable, and they've just had an illness or an injury that needs rehabilitation. So it's going to feel different than a, a hospital. Mm -hmm. um, it, in some ways, it, it's very much saying there's, there's hospital rooms, there's nurses, there's doctors, but it's, it feels a lot differently. The emphasis here is getting the patient to rehab. Uh, all the studies show the dose of rehabilitation, the amount of therapy they get, matters in terms of their outcome and their length of stay and, and how soon they can go home. So that's okay. that, that pretty, that's, the that's difference perfect. between them is that? Yeah, that's great. I, I think one of the other things too, which uh, people don't, don't always understand when they come to our environment, is that we're really looking for uh, the people that we're caring for to do for themselves as much as they can. So our goal is to get them to be independent. We're sometimes in an acute hospital that really isn't the expectation. You're being cared for, and of course we care for our patients, but we want to make sure that they can do as much as they can for themselves, and that is really part of the active therapy process. Great, great, thank you. And I'll just keep the questions going because they're coming from Facebook, so I'm just gonna keep reading them as we walk. We can just talk and walk. Okay. Um, Maria has a question, why a rehab hospital and not a nursing home? I can, I can answer that one, and then uh, we'll have Dr. Shaughnessy. Um, you know, I think it really depends on the level of care that you need. Um, not every patient needs to go into an acute rehab hospital. Not every patient needs that. Um, so some people definitely um, would be more appropriate for a nursing home environment. The folks that come to us really do have significant functional impairments. In other words, difficulty walking, getting dressed, um, just doing your normal activities of daily living. Um, but they need to be able to participate in a pretty intensive rehab program. Um, and the medical oversight that we have here and the medical involvement, which I'll let Dr. Shaughness speak to, is not going to be found in a nursing home environment. Yeah, that's one of the big differences uh, in an acute rehabilitation setting. You're going to have uh, many more doctors. You're going to see a lot more doctors than you would in a nursing home. Uh, in general, the patients have a little more degree of medical complexity, the way we put it. In other words, they just need more medical care, they have more medical problems, they're active. Um, in general, the patients at the inpatient rehabilitation are going to need and be able to tolerate a more intensive rehab program, as you mentioned earlier. And so it's, it's a little bit different setting. It's, it doesn't really feel like a nursing home when you're here. Sure. Great. Well, you, you want to tell us what's happening here and what we got? <laughs> A lot going on. Sure. <laughs> Can I get a volunteer to come and talk about some of our therapy equipment? I bet I can. Yeah. Steve, you'll help us out, right? Sure. Absolutely. Maybe you can um, just talk about what some of the equipment is here that we have Absolutely. available. Well, we have exercise mats to start off with. We have plenty of those. A couple of them are called high-low tables, where it, electrically you can move it up and down, which is convenient for us to complete our treatments that way, um, to have the various levels. We have over here, this is a parallel bars that are adjustable, electrically adjustable, up, down, in, out, and so that's convenient to have that. Over here we have a tilt table. We can put patients on this who have um, orthostatic hypotension and uh, gradually get them more and more used to the standing upright position. Um, over here, we're putting together a light gate, which allows us to harness patients 
and then also have them step on the treadmill at the same time. Patients that have decreased use of their low extremities that normally wouldn't be able to uh, do any walking or, or um, uh, especially continuous walking without a lot of major support from somebody. So putting the harness on them allows us to get down with them and, and help them move their legs through the process of being on the treadmill. Uh, over here, we have a side fit exercise machine, which is uh, it's really adaptable to all kinds of patient situations because we can assist a patient to move into the chair, transfer from their wheelchair into this chair, and then use the machine. But also, we're able to slide the chair right out. Like so. And then we can bring the patient in in their wheelchair and then set them up so that they can do <coughs> arm and leg exercise simultaneously from even their wheelchair. Now over here we have our stairs. This is where we train patients to go up and down stairs. We have one side that's six inch height and one side that's four inch height. So we have that variability to train them with. And ongoing, we have a full set of exercise equipment here, which is nice and very convenient. We have the cuff weights, the dumbbells, weight bars. So we have all that. Another treatment table here that's adjustable. Another side fit machine that's upper extremity oriented only. But once again, it has the capacity to pull the chair out and use, use just a wheelchair in here. Also, this is nice that it tilts upwards like this so you can adjust the variability and a patient can actually stand and do their, their arm exercises in addition to being in the wheelchair. Both of these side fit uh, uh, machines have electronic uh, you know, controls that we can vary the type of workout that we put them through anything from manual to uh, basing it on watts and mets and uh, uh, isometric strengthening, isotonic strengthening, I mean, hills, heart rate, and then a fit quick option. Wow. Nice mm -hmm. that we have that. And, uh, oh, we have a stander over here. We call it a therapeutic standing. That's it. A patient would be sitting and then put a harness around their pelvis buttocks area. And then, you, we don't have the harness here now, but, oh yeah, we do. So this is the harness. And this harness would be placed underneath their buttocks like so. And you go ahead and hook it in here. I'm doing this rather hastily, but I think it, it, I can show you. Their knees are blocked here, and we can adjust the knee blocking. Is this locked? Or? Oh, yeah, and then we lock it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Yeah. Go sailing off oh, there. <laughs> Get your butt. So it stands a patient up that normally wouldn't be able to stand up well. And then we can work with, um, if they have knee contractures, we can, yeah. we can gradually increase the uh, range of motion in their knees by giving them a sustained stretch. And then Patients that otherwise wouldn't be able to stand for a prolonged period of time can be assisted to stand for a prolonged period of time and do activities with their upper extremities up there on this standing table. So we have that and another set of parallel bars over there by the windows. We also have a ceiling harness, a ceiling track here. Right up in here. And uh, the lift is not the lift mechanism is not here yet, but a lift mechanism similar to the one that you saw with the light gate comes down from this track, and then we put them on a harness there and just walk them freely on the, along the length of the track here. But they'll be supported by the harness again. So uh, how long does a patient usually stay in this room? Do they get to do everything in the same hour or two, or? Do they <laughs> no, there we would we would 
tailor the, the program to fit their mm -hmm. specific needs mm -hmm. and uh, their tolerance. And uh, you know, uh, we might have a patient focus one session on therapeutic exercise only. Mm -hmm. Another session we might focus on gait training. Another session we might focus on, and this would be physical therapy I'm speaking sure. of, but then yeah. occupational therapy focuses on their assisted, their activities of daily living sure. and uh, their upper extremities and their fine motor control sure. with their upper, with their hands and their fingers. And so uh, not all machines know um, mm -hmm. it, that they, that would be too much at once for them to, mm -hmm. but and depending uh, on their needs. Depending on their needs, right. Right, yeah. we try to tailor it so that we can get the maximum therapeutic value out of the time that they're with us that they can tolerate being with us. You know, there's yeah. a point where they become fatigued. Right, of course. So yeah, yeah. Yes. But great. This, uh, good question. Though. This is great. I just want to, this is a great facility, and I, 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 patients love being able to get up. I mean, yes. it's very important not just physically, as you know, but also emotionally. They seem to get a whole new perspective. I've been in a wheelchair for two weeks. Yeah. Now I'm up where I used to be. Right. And yeah. it's hard, and you know, getting them to that point, but I, I always hear that from them when I see them. It's a great feeling. Absolutely, yeah. Good, big part of their progress. Great. Excellent. Thank you. That was awesome. Thanks, yeah. Steve. Oh, you're very I appreciate, welcome, appreciate it. Yes, he did a much better <laughs> job than I ever yeah. could have. <laughs> That's for sure. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. Awesome. That was impromptu. That wasn't set up. <laughs> so I appreciate it. That's okay, great. so you want to just take us on to the next scene? Sure. We have an ADL suite, and this is where um, we get the opportunity, and it's still being set up, so bear with that, uh, where we get the opportunity to practice some activities of daily living. Um, so this environment is really uh, simulating an apartment. Um, as you can see, we're still setting up our stove area and our washer dryer, but we have uh, people come in here and actually practice these life skills. So it could be making the bed, it could be getting in and out of bed. Um, it could be, you know, loading and unloading um, the clothes washer and dryer or doing light meal preparation to see how they do with their safety awareness and their mobility. Um, you know, how do they do around a hot stove? Um, you know, are they able to kind of manage getting things out of the refrigerator and doing light meal preparation? So those are some of the things that we do here. And then we also have our bathroom. where, again, we can simulate, um, you know, what they might find in their home environment. So getting on and off of um, the toilet, uh, we have uh, the sink area as well as a shower and a tub because most people have, um, may have a tub at home, not just uh, a walk-in shower like we have in our, in our um, patient rooms, which you'll see in just a bit. Um, but, you know, how do they do negotiating in and out of uh, places like that, washing up and drying up and those things. So it kind of sounds like it's an assessment tool yes. of some sort. Do they do this maybe in the beginning of the process when they first come here? Or is this continuous? Or is this an end of uh, rehab hospital? Can you kind it of is continuous, that? but go it ahead. Is. It is. I mean, mostly mid to later. You know, usually you, you're initially just trying to get people up and moving. Get them in and out of their chair. Get sure. them in and out of their bed. Then you start to look towards discharge and what do we have to do? What what are our goals? What barriers do we have to get over to get, get somebody home, get them okay. back to the community? And uh, they sometimes can start fairly early. If the patient right. is doing well, they'll start right away. You know, Great. you want to get people going as soon as possible. I'd say more frequently, like after somebody's been here a few days or a week or something, then you might be in here. But okay. it's, it's always a good sign when you get to this level where you're yeah. doing this. Well, that that's good. We're, we're thinking about home. So Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it's... It's really nice to see when you are able to work with someone and they can start preparing their own meals. <laughs> you know, it seems like a very small thing or something we take for granted. Right. But to actually go into your own kitchen, get something out of the fridge and prepare it. Yeah. Um, that's a huge step uh, for people uh, when they're experiencing rehab. So um, it really is a pretty rewarding thing. And you know, makes the place smell good too when people are cooking. So, <laughs> do our other rehab hospitals have the same setup? Because it's something that, like, just like you said, you don't really think about a lot. Right. But this is probably very important. To it's it's very that's important. Independent and at home. Um, are the other uh, other hospitals like this? The, as well? the ones that uh, our hospital located in Avon mm -hmm. has this, as well as the one located in um, that's going to be Edwin Shaw down in Bath, uh, will have this same type of setup and philosophy. Great. 
Not all um, uh, nursing homes would have uh, this available, um, and not all rehab hospitals. It really kind of depends on the design of their building. Excellent. Great. Well, let's okay. go on to the, the next part of the tour. <coughs> All right, we're just going to walk down the hallway here. Am I walking fast? And you guys are um, expecting patients on Tuesday, correct? Yes, um, we're expecting the people that are currently uh, being treated mm -hmm. uh, at the Euclid Rehab Unit to transfer over to us. And Dr. Shaughnessy is um, a physician over there, a medical director over there as well. So he's coming with us uh, to Beachwood here. So we're very fortunate to have that continuity. Yeah, we're getting ready. We have a, a good number of patients, about 12 to 15 patients will be moving over here on Tuesday and we're, we're getting them ready. And you mentioned there are 60 beds here. Yes, there's so six. Have rooms for more. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. <laughs> Wednesday we, we'll be looking for more, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so uh, w our goal on Tuesday really is to make sure that um, it's a very special event uh, and that it's not something that uh, is going to create any anxiety. Um, so we've actually put together some pretty nice detailed plans for people that are going to be coming over here. Um, I think you know I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag with what we're going to do, but I think people will feel pretty special. Um, and then we're, we're looking uh, on Wednesday, so that's our focus for Tuesday. Care for the people that are transferring over. And on Wednesday, um, we're certainly looking to accept um, you know, all referrals uh, for people that need our level of care. Great. Well, you wanna walk us into maybe like a patient room, show us what a, what a normal day in a patient's life I would love to. Like? Okay. Here's So as you can see, um, again, each room is a private room, um, very spacious because typically uh, people that are experiencing um, rehab and, and need our level of care, uh, they may have uh, different pieces of equipment in here. Um, so having this large of a, of a room really is very nice and very helpful. Um, of course, their own uh, clothes closet, um, our various, um, of course, technologies that are in the wall um, which is right around here. So every room has, you know, um, a very um, nice call bell system, as well as uh, looking at uh, any kind of uh, medical uh, needs that we have, whether it's, uh, you know, the ability to provide suction for patients that may, that may need that. Um, but oxygen. oxygen, it really is a state of the art um, facility. So we're, we're pretty uh, pleased with that. I like the, uh I don't know if you swing around here. The, they got the, the sink there, and it's going to be set up not quite yet, but it's you wheel up to it in your wheelchair. Oh, great. Which is, I think that's a nice nice touch. So right. is the bathtub uh, wheelchair accessible? Uh, how is this, this room, actually, uh, and every uh, patient room has this set up. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is where we'd be doing training for uh, showering. Um, so pe if necessary, people could uh, wheel into here. But we certainly want to get someone to progress to the point that they're ambulating or walking into here. Sure. Um, and then, of course, we have all the adaptive equipment in here. We have the grab bars, of course, the shower head that removes a uh, seat if someone needs it, if they don't have a high level of endurance. Um, but we're trying to get them to be as independent as possible. Um, and this really is to have each room, mm -hmm. each private room with a setup like this really is, is pretty great. And the room that we were just looking at had a bathroom. So that's Absolutely. kind of a goal to make sure you can get in and out. Absolutely. And the room. Okay, Good point. Great. Yep. Great. And I heard you, um, well, I was here last week and I saw um, a great courtyard that maybe we can sure. show our viewers. Yeah. Oop. Sorry. And um, so can you explain a little bit about the courtyard as we're going? Yeah, the courtyard that we have, um, which is kind of in the, in the middle of the building, um, it has a, a variety of different surfaces. Uh, for people to be able to, again, practice ambulating. Um, and actually, we can, we can see it if we go into this patient room. So when you look out here, we have um, 
where you can see the um, the bars and the ramp. That ramp is intentionally uh, got a, a little bit of an incline to it, again, to provide a little bit of a challenge for someone that's uh, regaining their ability to walk. Uh, and there are some different surfaces out there, not just the grass and the concrete, but on the sides, uh, they're more rough surfaces. When someone, again, is, is learning how to walk again, they're not always gonna have full foot clearance. So when you have different levels of uh, surface and different types of surface, uh, it becomes more of a challenge. And of course, it's also a nice place for people to be able to just kind of get out and relax a little bit in the outdoors. Well, is there anything else that you wanted to show us in the hospital before we go? I think we're pretty well set. Okay. Um, we do have one uh, patient area, um, and not that we need to see it because it's identical to what we have here um, that we've seen today, but um, it is a brain injury unit, um, and there are 14 beds in that area. What that's going to allow us to do is to be able to, if someone's at an elopement risk, maybe they don't have the you know, the cognitive um, ability to know not to be going out or they're not going to be safe if they were able to get up and go outside, that we can put on what's called a wander alert. Um, so the doors open and close freely, but if someone has one of those devices on, they will lock to prevent them from possibly going out and, and hurting themselves. But that's really kind of the key difference. Also in our brain injury area, we have some separate areas for treatment. Many people, um, really can't tolerate a lot of distraction during treatment. So it's specially designed for that as well. Great. And that's all in the, in the same area here? It is. It's, it's just right down uh, the hallway. Actually, we can take a two minute walk. Okay, yeah, let's just, we'll speed walk a little bit. Sure. So uh, we are also gonna have the ability to, to um, take people that uh, need dialysis. Uh, we have um, six different rooms here that have um, the capacity within the room to be able to provide dialysis services. Um, many times, um, you know, the huge advantage to that, having it on site, is just how tired people get with dialysis. So if we don't have to transport them to an outpatient location and then back again, we're gonna be able to maximize their therapy time here and not lose that valuable time with transport. Um, so to us, it's really a key program that we'll be able to offer and provide to patients that need that care. Yeah, we're very excited to have it. And uh, we have two groups of nephrologists currently on staff, ready to go, and we're getting a third group is in the process. Excellent. So yeah, we'll be well covered. That's great. All right. Sure. Hello. Hi. So nurses station. Yes, uh, so our nurses stations, um, you see that the way that they're designed um, is that we're going to be able to, you know, as people are sitting here working, you're going to be able to look down both corridors uh, and be able to have a clear um, pathway and vision. So if, in fact, there was a light um, that was on, we'd be able to see exactly what room it is, as well as, of course, on the um, system itself. And we'll head down this way. So we're, I'll be spending a lot of time here. It's a, a doctor's <laughs> workroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So. Again, this is just another one of the kind of wings of the hospital. Okay. So more rooms in this area, correct? More rooms, patient treatment area. We're still going around the courtyard, right? So we're on another side of it here. Right. It's kind of And uh, one of the things that we um, have available as well, which we think is a pretty key advantage, is having an electronic record system, EPIC, uh, which is the same system that the Cleveland Clinic has. Um, and it really will allow us to be able to communicate um, in a seamless way to make sure that um, you know, we're not disrupting care. We're not asking uh, you know, the patient or the family the same question 15 times over. And uh, maybe you can speak to that, Dr. It's, Shaughnessy. It's, it's very important to us, and I think to the, uh, the doctors that are going to be coming in here, the internists and the specialists, to have access to the records anytime, virtually instantly. It just takes a few seconds to get in there. 
and that's just we also have the ability to get on care everywhere which is another set of records from other hospitals so um, that that means a lot when you're kind of trying to take care of a lot of different patients and you need to get information quickly and completely yeah Great. so we're very happy with that That's okay. And we're gonna um, head down this way and then we will head back to the lobby. Um, and I just wanna be able to uh, get you to see a little bit how uh, the brain injury um, uh, unit is different and then we'll wrap things up. Okay, great. So we just made kind of a full circle? Is where yes. So we have more uh, offices in this location, of course, as well as the patient treatment area, um, patient rooms. And we have our um, WOW, as we call them, workstation on wheels. So that's what our uh, nurses will uh, be first. utilizing. First, yes. Thank it's you. <laughs> it's a good thing someone's looking out for me. <laughs> I don't want to have to be a patient on Tuesday. <laughs> so you were describing the WOW? Yes, it's a workstation on wheels. Okay. So that's what our um, staff will be able to use. It's, so it's having the portable electronic medical record. Okay. So it's, it's instantaneous charting. Um, so, you know, the old days, paper record, you go, you treat the patient, and then at the end of the day, if you can remember what you did, you chart it accurately. Now this will be real time. So this is it right here? Yes. Medication. Right, that's the medication cart, and then this is the workstation on wheels. And they're able to come into the patient rooms with these? Absolutely. Uh, sure. So one of the features that we have here as well is for the bariatric population. Um, so this room is designed with wider doorways, uh, with a lift in the room, as well as with um, equipment and furniture that can um, handle um, a heavier patient. Uh, so it allows us to be able to uh, keep our staff safe and keep our patients safe with being able to help them to get in and out of bed, uh, bed mobility and, and um, begin their therapy process. So uh, we have uh, seven of these different rooms uh, that are located on a variety of different units. So again, another population that we can provide service to that many places just don't have the setup that we do. Our other nurses station here, and then our brain injury unit is right down here. Okay. We can take a walk down there, and then I think we're going to be good to go. Okay, great. It does select medical and then five. So are the rooms different in this unit, or what is the first thing that we're going to see? The first thing that's different is the doors and the locking mechanism. Again, I, I spoke earlier about the fact that if someone is, uh, is here on this unit is physically mobile, but maybe is, doesn't have the safety awareness, um, we can actually attach a bracelet um, to that individual so that if in fact they're walking down the hallway and they approach the doors within three or four feet, it just locks the door. And it gives us the ability to make sure that the person isn't um, gonna put themselves at risk. Sure, sure. And how many uh, patient rooms are in the unit? There are 14. 14. 14. So the room setup is the same. What's a little bit different is we have a satellite nurse's station just dedicated to this unit, so it's a smaller nurse's station. And we have some day rooms and treatment rooms that, again, because um, many times with um, people that have a brain injury, a lower stimulation environment allows them to be able to process and learn more effectively. Um, so we do have two rooms at the end of the hallway um, designed just for that purpose. Now, uh, brain injury, 
what exactly are we talking about for brain injury? Okay. Sure. Do you want to take sure, that one? Yeah. Uh, most commonly, people think about traumatic brain injury, a head trauma. Um, but we have a lot of patients that have similar kinds of problems to a head trauma just from a, a stroke or for something we call encephalopathy, inflammation of the brain, which can happen with a variety of medical and neurologic problems. Mm -hmm. And the, the sort of common factor is usually some change in mental status, awareness, attention, orientation to the surroundings. Uh, often goes along with problems with language, ju judgment, um, and insight into safety, which is one of the reasons that, that right. uh, Dave set this up this way. Uh, so it really covers quite a, a wide variety, and we, we do commonly see a lot of these patients we're asked to rehab them, and it's nice to have a facility where you feel safe doing it. Sure. Right. Thank you. I can't add to that. <laughs> <laughs> if I That's exactly it. One of the things I was worried about when, when they were building this place is if you look out there, there's 271. It's like 50 yards from here. I can't hear it. That's what I, I really like. I can't hear the cars going by there. Right. And that's that means a lot. That's a very good point. Yeah. Well, it's, I we're was, right next to the highway. I have right. Heard that's, the car. That's some, that was my first concern. It's like, yeah. oh my gosh, they're right on the highway. But I, I'm standing right here next to the door and I can't hear it. That's a very good right. point. Yeah. So yeah. I, I like that. Yeah. yeah. That's, so great, yeah. that's good for the patients. Yeah. So this is, um, again, um, for this uh, patient population, uh, it's an area that we can pull the shades down and have a lower stimulation environment. Um, and we could be doing a variety of things in here. We could be doing cognitive testing. We could be doing you know, higher level uh, learning skills. Uh, we could be doing mobility. And again, part of some of the difficulty at times is um, you know, people get distracted that have, that have suffered a brain injury. So if we can keep the distractions down, we can engage them more readily and um, help to progress their therapy quicker. Uh, so we have this uh, room, and then we also have another room over there that, again, specifically designed for this population. Great. Well, Dr. Shaughnessy, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much, Dave. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. It's my you pleasure. Done an amazing job. This is a beautiful hospital. Uh, and thank you. And if you guys want to see more and uh, learn more information, you can go to Cleveland Clinic Rehab. Dot com and thank you for watching.